Hello, hi, this is Anurag from Be Good Academy. And today I have here with me a special guest, Claire Hickson from the UK. It's an interesting question. Uh, oh, this is something even I wanted to ask you personally. The ability to write poems, we think, is a gift of God. So how have you entered the world of poetry? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, I would say in a, the short answer to that is through meditation. Mm -hmm. So practices that I've been doing for the last seven, eight years that I've just deepened, meditation, um, exploring the breath, so and, and yoga as well, the, the physical practice of yoga. So practices and techniques that take us uh, deeper into ourselves and create a little bit of stillness within yourself. Um, when I really deepened this, I had the opportunity in 2020 with the pandemic, as we all know, the whole world locked down. And what that gave me was an opportunity to become more still and less distraction. And as soon as I deepened my meditation practice, which was every single day in the morning, I, it happened to me spontaneously. So I didn't plan to become a poet i didn't it wasn't something from here it wasn't a conscious decision it happened to me through meditation and in meditation practice many mysterious things can happen many mm -hmm. mystical things can happen lots of people have different experiences with meditation and mine happened to be with words and poetry so the way that the poetry, I say that it arrived with me, was I began to hear it mm -hmm. and sense it. So either in the middle of my meditation practice, at the end of my meditation practice, or just sometimes moments during the day or in the middle of the night at 3 a.m., I would be woken up. Oh, okay. Because there would be certain lines repeating in my head and this would wake me up and 3 a.m is known as a a very sacred time a very mystical sort of time mm -hmm. so it's no surprise but yeah i would be woken up by this in the middle of the night and i would have to take my notebook and pen and write them so and the process of the poetry wasn't me sitting down, deciding what to write. The poetry came to me. All right. And the process, and it still happens that way. The, the, the process is that the title comes to me first. Oh, okay. So I hear a title mm -hmm. and then I get a sense of the poem, how long it's going to be, mm -hmm. um, the feel of the poem. It's, qu it's quite hard to describe because it's a very personal process but probably similar to something like songwriting you know great mm -hmm. songwriters are driving along and they're mm -hmm. they re they hear something like oh you know i need to stop and uh, right, write right. this that is similar so i mm -hmm. always have a notebook with me because oh, i right. never know when inspiration is going to strike wow. strike but <laughs> i do to, to be able to be what I would call a channel for this, mm -hmm. like a conduit, because this is coming through me, mm -hmm. um, I I, it's important that I maintain my level of consciousness. So if I stop meditating, if I stop these daily practices, then it's almost like the, the connection is slightly blocked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, it's important for me to keep up those practices. Um, and so I'm dedicated to that because I feel that the words come to me mm -hmm. and that the messages that they need to be shared. All right. So you're saying this meditation is what keeps you going, right? Yes. All right. So listening to you, I feel that you're a bit fascinated by the Eastern culture, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I am. Um, is something that I'm, I just continue to explore. And I find the fascinate, the fascination is, is between the, the sort of Western culture and the Eastern culture. And I just find myself much more drawn in by the Eastern philosophy. I see. Mm -hmm. And again, 
It is just that when I have explored that deeper, it makes sense to me. Like I feel that from a deeper place. I feel like I understand it very quickly. Um, and the Eastern philosophy studies for me have come through yoga, so my yoga practice. But that's, this is the whole system of yoga. The, the yogic philosophy is really, really so, interesting Sorry if I may interrupt you. How long have you been practicing yoga? Um, coming up to nearly 10 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then in the last uh, three or four years, I've trained to become a yoga instructor. Great. Which then involves you exploring the philosophy much, much deeper understanding the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, wow. the sutras. So a, a little bit of a sprinkling of all of those, which has really fascinated me. And it, it basically allows me as a teacher to explain to Westerners what, why they are in a yoga class. Why? What's the point? What's the point of the practice? So I'm able to spread that philosophy a little bit Great. more. And, uh, and do you think uh, a lot more people uh, from the West would be inclined towards the Eastern culture in the, in the future? Yeah, I think it's rising. I think it's as part of people just generally wanting to be more conscious and many challenges sort of giving us mental health challenges so people feeling less emotionally stable so the industry it's certainly in the uk um, and i know this is across america and europe as well we call it the wellness industry mm -hmm. it's huge it's booming because everybody has an interest in becoming more well mm -hmm. emotionally mentally physically spiritually so I would say that more and more people are exploring these ancient practices and bringing them into the modern world. Mm -hmm. Because really what, what Eastern philosophy and practices were teaching more than 5,000 years ago mm -hmm. are more relevant today than ever because we have that much more distraction. So if we can, if we can come out of the distraction and come into our breath, mm -hmm. such as simple practice or meditation, uh -huh. we could maybe, we don't need all the medicine and the, the drugs, maybe we could use mm -hmm. more natural, natural solutions. Right.